لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله All the praise is due to Allah who has revealed to us the religion of Islam and its night is like its day and Allah has left us upon the clear straight path The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam warned us that there will come a day when the ummah the nation will see great differing and that they would arise in the muslim ummah new things new sayings and new ideas which have been never mentioned and never said and never understood by rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his sahaba so the prophet warned sallallahu alaihi wasallam of these differences and these innovations that will arise in the religion and he called all of them going astray and misguidance and he warned that all of these new things and these new ways and these new sayings and ideas that they are in the fire so he ordered the muslim the believer in allah the believer in allah's revelation to his prophet he ordered them to cling to the sunnah of Muhammad and to the sunnah of the Khulafa ar-Rashidin the rightly guided successors to bite it with their teeth to never let go of it to follow the way of the companions of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam so this is not going to be a talk of fairy tales this is not going to be a talk of stories taken from the minds of men in order to entertain and mislead and misguide the people from Allah's path but these are going to be the details of death as described by Allah in his last and final revelation the Quran the last revelation and as the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam described not in the fabricated lies attributed to him not the fairy tales and the stories attributed to him by the people without knowledge by the people who intend to misguide mankind away from the true path of Islam but those sayings which have been authentically and proven by the scholars of hadith of narration to have been uttered and said by the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam because rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he warned us warned us against those who would claim that the prophet said this and the prophet said that but they would be lying about him and lying against him whereas the prophet had never said those things and he said about these people these inventors these fabricators let them put their seat in the hell fire so brothers and sisters from the outset of this talk there is not going to be any confusion as to which direction this talk is coming from the, the direction of this talk is coming from the people of knowledge the true people of knowledge the people of Allah's book and the people of the sayings of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the people who have studied Allah's book as it should be studied the people who have studied and authenticated the sayings of the prophet as they should be studied and should be authenticated that based their religion on evidence and proof that is clear not on wild stories not on fanciful stories not on fairy tales not on inventions but on the clear evidence revealed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Quran and the beautiful and perfect sunnah of his last and final messenger Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and it is from Muhammad and his companions that we learn our religion they are the bringers to us of our religion not philosophers not mystics not people who invent things for themselves but the teachers of our religion are none other than rasulullah his companions and the people who followed their way and their understanding so with this introduction i would like to mention and begin the subject proper and this is the issue of death oh my dear brothers and sisters death is something that we think about very little death is something that we think about hardly at all 
And this is one of the reasons of our decline. This is one of the reasons of our humiliation. This is one of the reasons why we find ourselves absorbed and taken up with the love of the world and the things of the world and chasing after the things of the world. And we have become a foolish people, a misguided people, an ignorant people who prefer to listen to stories and fairy tales than to listen to the haq, to listen to the truth. Because we have forgot the reality of death. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us that the wise one, the wise one is the one who remembers death. The wisdom is in remembering death. And that frequently remembering death will soften your heart, will make your heart soft, soft to the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, soft to the reality of la ilaha illallah, that nothing has the right, nothing is worthy of our ibadah, of our worship, illallah, except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So let us take ourselves on an imaginary journey. Let us take ourselves on a journey through the stages of death. A journey whose details and the description of which is derived and taken from the Book of Allah and from the authenticated sayings of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And first let us deal with the condition of the evil soul, the unbelieving soul, the disbelieving soul. So when the soul of the wicked dies, when the soul of the transgressor dies, when the soul of the unbeliever dies, the angel of death, Malik al maut comes to take the soul of this individual. And the angels gathered on the, as far as the eye can see on the horizon, terrifying, dark in appearance, fearsome angels, and the angel of death will come and the angel of death will take the soul from this wicked person. And this soul of the wicked one will spread throughout the body because the soul of the evil liver, the soul of the unbeliever has met his fate. He has met the real day and now he knows and now she knows that the reality has come to pass. The reality has come to pass that the angel of death has come to take their soul and they lived and she and he lived their life in heedlessness forgetting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, forgetting the reality of what Islam was. And so the soul will spread throughout the body of the disbeliever. So when the angel of death comes to take the soul of the wicked, evil liver of the disbeliever, then the soul will be wrenched. Just as you will take, you, if you can imagine, having a stick of thorns and surrounding the stick of thorns in wool, so how you can imagine the thorns will rip the wool and this is how the, the, the soul of the disbeliever will be ripped from the body, tearing the veins and then the soul will come out stinking, a stinking smelling soul and the angel of death, Malik al Mot, he will wrap the soul in a stinking smelly harsh and hairy cloth and he will pass the soul amongst the gathered angels and each of these angels will wrap the soul of this evil soul in another a layer upon layer of these hairy stinking cloths and then they will be taken, the soul will be taken up through the heavens and the inhabitants of the heavens they will say and call the soul by all the evil and wicked names that this soul was known by on this earth you wicked soul, you evil soul, you soul that did not pray, you soul that did not fast you soul that rejected Allah and his messenger and so the soul will be abused and it is taken up through the heavens and permission will be sought to enter through the first heaven but it will be rejected and a command will be given throw the soul down to the torment in its grave and so the soul will be thrown back to the grave back to the grave and when the soul has been returned to the grave then the angels of questioning will come the angels of questioning will come. Oh my brothers and sisters, do not be fooled by the liars. Do not be fooled by the liars. Do not be fooled by the perverters of truth.
who lie against Allah and his messenger, who lie against Islam, when they say, if you follow me, I will come and I will answer the questions of the angel of death. No, no, these are lies. You will be asked yourself and no one will be able to answer the questions for you. Your life and your deeds and your actions, they will testify for you. And you will not be able to lie to the angels of death. You will not be able to fool the angels of death. Like you lied and you fooled and you deceived in this life. No, my people, no. In your grave, the questioning is severe. The interrogation is intense. So when the angels of death, they ask the evil liver, the disbeliever, who is your Lord? Who is your Lord? Then, the evil soul will scream and cry, Ah! In pain! I do not know. I do not know. And what was your religion? They will ask again, Ah! Pain! Torment! I do not know. And then they will ask, And who is this man? Who is this man, Nun Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that was sent amongst you? And he will say, I heard the people say this, and I heard the people say that, so I said what the people said. And the angels will say, you lived in doubt, and you died in doubt, and inshallah, you will be raised on doubt. So people, do not be fooled. If your Lord was money, if your Lord was another human being who you preferred to Allah and His Messenger, and you preferred their saying to the saying of Allah and His Messenger, if your Lord was your family, if your Lord was your culture, if your Lord was these things, and you believed that these things were going to make you happy, and these things were going to give you success, and these things were going to rescue you, and give you succor, and help you in your time of need, these are your gods, you will not be able to say, Allah is my Lord. No, my people, ah, ah, I do not know. You lived in doubt. You lived in doubt and you died in doubt. And inshallah, the angels will say, you will be raised in doubt. And then, and then a voice will be heard from the heavens. Show this one their place in paradise if they had been a believing soul. So a window will be opened into paradise. And it will be said to this person, this would have been your place in paradise if you had been a believing soul. And then that window will be closed and a voice will be heard from heaven, show this soul their place in hellfire. And a window will be opened to the hellfire. And the heat will come from this window into the grave. And it will be said, this is your place in hellfire. And then a man will appear at the feet of the evil disbelieving soul. An ugly man, a vile man, dressed in vile, evil smelling clothes. And the man will say, oh you, you bring evil tidings. Who are you? And the man will say, I am your evil deeds. And I found you only slow to remember and obey Allah. Slow to remember Allah, slow to obey Allah, so may you meet an evil end. And then a man will come who is deaf and dumb and blind. He cannot see, he cannot hear, and he cannot talk. And this man will carry a hammer. He will carry a hammer. That if this man was to strike a mountain with this hammer, he would turn it to dust. And this man will strike the soul of the unbeliever and shatter the soul of the unbeliever and the soul of the evil, wicked person or the soul of the unbeliever will let out such a scream that will be heard by all the creatures except the men and the jinn. And then Allah will recreate this soul and the deaf, dumb and blind man will strike it again and the soul will let out a scream again. And then Allah will crush the man in his grave, crushing his rib cage, constricting him. And as this is going on, 
the unbelieving soul will cry, O oh Allah, this soul that didn't believe in Allah, this soul that used to call upon idols, this soul that used to call upon so-called saints, this soul that used to call upon all the things except Allah. Now this soul is calling to Allah alone. Oh Allah, oh Allah, don't let the day of judgment come and the life in the grave of this evil, wicked soul will be so long, will be so long, so extended, but surely, eventually, the inevitable will come, the day of judgment, the promised day, the day that Allah has promised when He will raise mankind up naked, naked, with no deed, with, with no money, with no family to protect you, with no army to protect you. But you will be raised with nothing except your deeds. And every atom's weight of good that we have done, we will know about it. And every atom's weight of evil we have done, we will know about it. And this is the day when those who are followed will renounce their followers. And that those who are followers will say, if only we had not followed them blindly. And people will be gathered under banners. And this is a day of fear, my people. This is a day of fear and terror, my brothers and sisters. They will turn their hair of children grey. That the mother who is suckling her child will abandon her child for the terror and the fear of this day of judgment. When mankind will be like a drunken riot. Like a drunken riot. As if they were rioting from drink. But their, their fear, their rioting, their running in panic will be from their fear and from their terror of the impending doom and punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the day when people will be up to their ankles in their own sweat, up to their knees in their own sweat, up to their waist in their own sweat, and some people will be bridled with their sweat according to their deeds. A day of fear, a day of terror. A day when the sun will be brought. The sun will be brought just one mile above our heads. Just one mile above our heads. And the day, people, when there will be no shade, my brothers and sisters. No shade except Allah's shade. There will be no shade except the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the true day. This day is the reality. This day makes this life seem like a dream. But how heedless we are. We fail to remember this day. We push it to the back of our minds. We say, yes, I believe in Allah. I believe in His angels. I believe in His books. I believe in His prophets. I believe in the day of judgment. I believe in the divine decree. But you say you believe in it, but do you believe in it with a real belief, with a real conviction that it's going to happen truly, that you're going to stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and He is going to ask you about every single thing that you've done? This one day, this one day is one day of 50,000 years for the unbelievers. One day of 50,000 years. Can you imagine a day? A day of fear, a day of terror, a day of panic, going on and on and on for 50,000 years. And at the end of that, what will happen? At the end of this day of judgment, Allah will change the disbelievers and throw them into the hellfire. He will not look at them. He will not talk with them. He will not question them. He will throw all those people who made shirk with him, who set up rhythm, first create the And they will take this soul up through the heavens. And then as it goes through the heavens, it will be known and called by all the good names it was known by in this life. And then when the angel, when the angels return this soul to the grave, and the angels severe in questioning, still severe in questioning, 
they come and they ask who is your Lord who is your Lord they will say my Lord is Allah because truly their Lord is Allah truly they worshipped Allah truly they believed that Allah alone was the originator and the creator and the maker and the controller and the power behind all things and they used to worship him alone and call upon him alone and sacrifice to him alone and they obeyed his revelation and followed the way and the sunnah of his messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so he knew his Lord he knew his Lord so he can say with confidence my Lord is Allah and when he said what was your deen what was your religion your way of life your way of living he will say Islam Islam meaning sincerity and submission to Allah sincerity to Allah and submission to Allah Islam the way of life revealed by Allah yes his deen his way of living his life was Islam and her life was Islam and when they say who do you what do you say about this man meaning Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam they will say he is Muhammad Rasulullah the Prophet of Allah and then the angel will ask and how do you know all of this listen my brothers and sisters to the answer the angel will ask how do you know all of this he will say I read the book of Allah and I believed in it I read the book of Allah the true believer is the reader, the studier, the knower of Allah's book its explanation, the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam which was understood by the sahaba I read the book of Allah and I believe in it so now when the angels, the questioning angels, they leave then a man will appear at his feet or it will be said to him, show him his place in hellfire if he had been a disbelieving soul so he will be shown his place in hellfire if he had been a disbelieving soul and then it will be said, show him his place or her place in paradise and they will be shown their place in paradise and their grave will become one of the gardens of paradise and then a man will appear a beautiful man in beautiful clothes who are you? the believing soul will ask who are you? for you bring glad tidings and he will say I am your good deeds and I only found you always quick to remember Allah and to obey Allah and may you have a good end may you have a good end so the believing soul is praying oh Allah let the day of judgment come let the day of judgment come and then the place of the martyrs the people who died fighting jihad for the sake of Allah to make his religion supreme then what they will get is even above this because their souls will be taken and put in green birds flying round the throne of Ar-Rahman flying round the throne of Ar-Rahman and Allah will ask them is there anything you desire? and they will say oh Allah they will say oh Allah what can I desire? I am in your presence round your throne and again Allah will ask them what do you desire? and they will give the same reply and again Allah will ask them again and when they realize that they will, Allah will not stop asking them until they give a reply they will say, oh Allah, oh Allah send us back send us back to the earth so that we may die fighting in your path again so you may experience the delight of death as a, as a martyr again and then Allah will say, no I have decreed death for the son of Adam only one time and then Allah will leave them oh brothers and sisters what are we striving for? what are we running after? 
What if we dedicated our life to gold and jewelry and money and fame and fortune? This is what we have dedicated our life to. But we don't think that we would like our souls to be the soul and the green birds flying round the throne of Ar-Rahman. Because we have forgotten the reality of death. So then the good soul is praying, Oh Allah, let the day of judgment come. So how will be the day of judgment for the believing soul, the true pious believing soul? It will be as the Prophet described, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as if it were the space between the afternoon prayer and the evening prayer. This is how it will be. And then there will be those who are gathered under the shade of Allah's, when, uh, under the shade of Allah, when there is no shade except Allah's shade. Those who are gathered, who loved each other for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and they loved each other for the sake of Allah alone. They loved each other because they were believers, not for money, not for business, not for some worldly gain, but they loved each other, and they met each other, and they left each other for the sake of Allah. And the just ruler, and the young, the youth, whose heart was attached to the mosque. And the one who gave charity, so that his right hand did not know what his left hand was doing. And the young man who was tempted to do illegal sexual intercourse with a rich woman, but he said, I fear Allah. He declined because he fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But how do we find ourselves running to these evils? Because we've forgotten the day when there will be no shade except Allah's shade. And then the believers, the believers, the condition is different. Because some of the believers, they will be tormented in their graves. Even though they believe in Allah, even though they are Muslims, they will be tormented in their graves for their sins. What a terrible torment they will face. Beatings, snakes, huge scorpions to come and sting them and punish them. Brothers and sisters, don't think you said, I am Muslim, and that is enough. Because Muslims will go to hellfire. Muslims will be punished by Allah. Muslims will be amongst those who are terrified on the day of judgment. Our deeds will be weighed. Our deeds will be weighed on the day of judgment. Our deeds. And the Prophet said, do you know who the miskeen is? The miskeen? Meaning the poor one? And they said, yes, Prophet of Allah. The, the poor one is the one who's got no money. He said, no. The poor one is the one who comes before Allah on the day of judgment with mountains of good deeds. But he abused this one. And he killed this one, and he hid this one, and he stole from this one, and he transgressed against this one. So his deeds will be taken away from him or her, his deed, their deeds will be taken away and given to those people until he has got nothing left. And then the evil deeds of those people will be put onto him or her until he or she is cast into hellfire. That is the poor one. That is the poor one. So beware of the day when Allah will put our deeds in scales. When we will be given the book in either our right hand. So the one who receives the book of deeds in their right hand, they will go back to their people rejoicing. Look at my book. Look at my book. But as the one who receives their book in their left hand from behind their back, they will say, oh, destruction, I am damned, I am destroyed. What book is this? It doesn't leave out a s small deed or a big deed, except that it's written down with numbers. Written with numbers. So some Muslims will be thrown to the hell of fire, because we will have to cross the bridge. We'll have to cross the bridge, the Sirat that everyone must pass across the bridge over hellfire. 
And up until this time, those monastics, the people who claimed that they were Muslims, they claimed to believe in Allah, they claimed to believe in Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but in reality, they didn't believe in Islam. They didn't believe in Allah because they didn't follow his book. They didn't believe in Muhammad because they didn't believe that Muhammad was their prophet. They believed in men after Muhammad. They put their faith and their trust in things other than Allah. They followed ways other than the way of the Sunnah. These are the monastics. The people who claimed Islam, but they hated Islam in their hearts. So up until this time they will have been staying with the believers. Then Allah will order them to prostrate. So the believers will prostrate. But the monastics, their backs will become as a solid piece. So every time they try to prostrate, they will fall over. And they will try to prostrate again, and they will fall over. And then they will all of them have to cross the bridge. Thinner than a hair, and sharper than a sword. Brothers and sisters, one day I recommend that you go to a mountain and stand on that mountain or stand on a cliff by the sea and imagine that in front of you is a thin, thin bridge thinner than a hair and sharper than a sword and before you is not the sea but in front of you is burning fire imagine now even in this hall today can you imagine? in this hall today if this hall was full of fire and you have to cross on a thin line, sharp as a sword. So how about when you have to cross the hellfire? The hellfire which is so big that when a stone was dropped from the top, it took 70 years to reach the bottom. We have to cross this, brothers and sisters. And the only thing that will help us across this bridge is our deeds. So some will pass like the blinking of an eye. Some will pass like lightning. But as they are crossing the hellfire, hooks will come and pull them down into it. These are believers. These are Muslims. The hooks will pull them down into the hellfire. And then, brothers and sisters, after this has happened, and the people are gathered, the people are gathered, then will come the wasila of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So we should know, brothers and sisters, that the intercession, the wasila of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is not in this life that some people think that they can go and they can pray to Muhammad, saying, Ya Rasulullah, asking him, and they say, this is the wasila of the Prophet. No! This is shirk to do this. This is shirk to make him an idol, to call on him besides Allah, the wasila of the Prophet, as he explained himself in the authentic sunnah, is his wasila on the day of judgment when he will intercede for the believers. He will intercede for those who had iman, not who made shirk, and not who made rivals with Allah, but those who had true iman, the best in the iman. And you say, go and take the fire. I will say, go and take those people who you find even with an atom's weight of Iman. So that again they will be protected and they will take out those people with an atom's weight of Iman. And then Allah will say, the prophets have interceded. And the martyrs have interceded. And the truthful have interceded. And the believers have interceded. And now all is left is the intercession of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself. So Allah from his rahmah will take out a handful of people from the hellfire who had no good deeds. And these people, Allah will take them out from his rahmah. Subhanallah. And then paradise, my brothers and sisters. Paradise. The place where there is no more pain, no more age, no more argumentation, no more useless talk. But the angels will come saying, Salam, Salam, peace, peace. Paradise, the place 
where the last man, the last man will, who will come to paradise, Allah will say to him, ask for everything that you want. So the man will ask. And Allah will say to him, ask more. And the man will ask more. And then Allah will say to him, you have everything you asked and the world again like it twice over. This is the last person in paradise what the last person in paradise will receive. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that a person's place in paradise the size of a bow. You know a bow now, the size of a bow is better than the world and all it contains. So the delights of paradise are numerous. The springs of wine, the rivers of honey and milk and wine, the trees where the fruits are easy to reach, the silken cushions, the golden bracelets, the silken embroidered garments, and you serving us, you of perpetual freshness, serving us with goblets of gold and crystal, and the houris of paradise, the virgins, the, par the, the virgins, the women of paradise. How will they be? Did the Prophet describe that if a tear from the huri fell into the oceans of the earth, the whole world will smell of perfume. That one of the jewels on the smallest of her crown is enough to light all that is between the heavens and the earth. And that a man's tent, a man's tent in paradise, a man's tent in paradise will be like, will be a hollowed pearl, 60 miles wide, his tent. And how about the mansions in paradise? And there will be a marketplace, there will be a marketplace in paradise. And this marketplace will be every Friday. And everybody will be on thrones, some of thrones of musk, some on thrones of camphor, some of, on thrones of gold, some on thrones of silver, and some of, on thrones of light. But the one who is sitting on the throne of musk will not feel jealous of the one who is sitting on the thrones of light. And on that day, Allah will talk to every single one of us. Allah will talk to every single one of us on this Friday. And this Friday is every week in paradise. Allah will talk to us. He will remind us of our sins that we used to do. And we will say, oh Allah, haven't you forgiven us? But Allah will say that He was reminding us so that you will feel so happy to be here in paradise. And we will be able to look upon the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the authentic narrations, he said to his companions, do you have any doubt about seeing the sun? Do you have any doubt about seeing the moon when it is full in the sky? And they said, no, O Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he said, so the believers will gaze upon the face of Allah. So the believers, and it will be the most beautiful thing more beautiful than the mates of paradise, more beautiful than the food and the delights of paradise, the most beautiful and most beloved thing to the believer will be that they will be able to look at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the worst thing, more than the fires of hell, more than the torments of hell, the greatest punishment for the unbeliever is that they will not be able to look at the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then there will be a marketplace in paradise. That after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are sitting on this Friday and the Friday in this place, Allah will send a perfumed rain. They will perfume us. And then He will open us to this marketplace. And in this place are things the eyes have never seen, the, earth, the ears have never heard, and the heart cannot possibly conceive. And after this, we will return to our families and our families will say, oh my husband, you left us beautiful and you returned even more beautiful. And then they will say, how can it not be like that since we conversed and looked upon the face of our Lord? 
And he will say that we left you beautiful. And we came back and we found you also more beautiful. And how long will this pleasure last? How long will this place last? Where there is everything your heart desires, everything your wish can conceive, every pleasure that you can imagine will be there in paradise. How long, my dear people, my dear brothers and sisters, how long will it be? A day? A week? A year? No. Forever and ever and ever and ever. And so I finish with one last saying taken from the authenticated narrations of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that when all the people who are to be taken out of hellfire have been taken out of hellfire and when all the people who are to enter paradise have been entered into paradise then Allah will bring a goat a black and white speckled goat and Allah will say to the people of hellfire do you know what this is? or it will be said because Allah will not speak to them so it will be said to the people of hellfire do you know what this is? and the people of hellfire will strain their necks and they will say yes Allah it is death and then Allah will call the people of paradise and Allah will say O oh, people of paradise do you know what this is? And the people of paradise will strain their necks and they will say, yes, Allah, it is death. Then Allah will order this goat to be slaughtered and there will be no more death. So the people of hellfire will become more and more miserable because of that. Because they know that they will never die and they will face Allah's punishment forever. And the people of paradise become more and more delighted because of it because that they know that they will never die and they will always be tasting the delights of Allah's paradise and brothers and sisters I leave you with one final reminder this final reminder is something that was said by the second rightly guided Khalif Umar ibn al-Khattab who said that if I was before, when I am Allah, if I was before Allah on the day of judgment and it was said that all of mankind are going to paradise except one Umar said, I would be afraid but I would be the one who is not going to paradise and if it was said that all of mankind are going to hell except one I would hope that I would be the one who is not going to hell so this is the condition of the mu'min of the believer of the one the muhsin the one who is on the highest level is not one as they some people claim the one who is lost in the love of Allah no because this is only a path to error and misguidance the believer always stands between the fear of Allah and the threat of his punishment and the love of Allah and the hope of his reward this is the example left for us by the best of all mankind the best of all mankind the companions of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam brothers and sisters my talk was a talk from Allah's book and from the message and the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam it was not a talk of fairy tales and my nice stories this is the reality this is the reality which Allah revealed. So brothers and sisters, cling to this reality, cling to this truth, bite it with your teeth and follow it because the day of your death is soon. Not one of us has a guarantee to live beyond the end of this talk. Does anyone in this room today have a written promise from Allah that he will live to see the end of the day? to see the end of this talk does anyone have a promise from Allah to live till tomorrow to live till next year none of us have it brothers and sisters none of us have a promise from Allah to live another hour we could be trapped in here and die tonight see what have we done with our life 
What have we done with our lives to worship Allah, to seek the correct knowledge of Him, to follow the way of His last and final messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to fill our life with good deeds, seeking the pleasure of Allah alone. And if we haven't, all of us, we should make tawbah. We should make tawbah to Allah right now. To make tawbah to Allah right now. That we will return to Him. That we will follow His religion as He commanded us to. For brothers and sisters, your life is short. And how many people on the day of judgment will say, Oh Allah, send me back. Send me back to earth. I will be righteous. I will live a righteous life. I will do good deeds. How many people would like to come back just for one day? For one day. And maybe today is your last day. Live every day as if that day was the day that Allah gave you to come back and live your life again. Although Allah will not give anyone, anyone, another chance. Death is the end of the matter. There is no coming back. There is no coming back after death. When you have met Allah and He has judged you and you have pleaded with Him, there is no coming back. It's finished. It's gone. So brothers and sisters, live tomorrow, live today as if today was your day of reprieve. Today was your last day. Because maybe it is. Maybe it is. Jazakallah khair for that most enlightening talk, Brother Green. Now it's question time. Then we have a question here. What is the purpose? of our creation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He told us that He created us and He created the jinn for no other reason except that we should worship Him. So brothers and sisters we exist to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We exist to worship Him alone. This is the reason for our existence as human beings. So we must know and realize that we will be asked about this matter. Did we worship Allah? And did we worship Allah the way He wanted to be worshipped? Or did we worship Allah according to our desires, according to our minds, according to what we fancy? But how can we worship Allah the way you want to worship Him. No, you must worship Allah the way He wants to be worshipped. And the way He wants to be worshipped is the way He taught us in His last and final revelation, the Qur'an. As is explained by His last and final messenger, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is the reason for which we exist. This is the purpose for which we have been created. So take care, brothers and sisters, to fulfill that purpose and to worship Allah with sincerity, seeking His pleasure alone, and to worship Him correctly according to the Sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Alhamdulillah, we have a question here. Where can we find these things that I mentioned? You said that I said that they were from authenticated sources. So where can we find them? Alhamdulillah, there is a very good book which is out in English. And this book is called The Mysteries of the Soul Revealed by someone called Mustafa Kennedy. Rahimullah, he is dead now himself. But he has written a very excellent book called The Mysteries of the Soul Revealed where he has gone through all the matters pertaining to death. And he has separated the authentic sayings concerning death from the invented and the weak sayings and just the stories that go amongst the people. So he has separated between these things. 
So he has shown what is from the Sunnah and what is from Revelation and what is from other than that. So I refer you inshallah to this book for a in-depth study of the matter of all these things pertaining to the realities of the soul after death. It's called again the mystery of the soul revealed by uh, Sheikh Mustafa Kennedy. There's a question here. Is there any mentioning about hell or heaven in the Bible? Yes, there are some mentions of heaven and hell in the Bible. But the passages that mention them are extremely few and very sparse. I myself was brought up in a Roman Catholic monastery. So I am used to be anyway very familiar with the Bible. Indeed, one of the things that convinced me that the Qur'an was not the speech of man, that indeed the Qur'an was revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is the descriptions of paradise and hellfire and the day of judgment. Because a book that is from Allah should describe in detail these realities because at the end of the day, it is these things, the day of judgment, the hellfire, the paradise, that is the ultimate concern of every single human being. So it is only befitting that a book that has been revealed from Allah should give us descriptions of these things. And the lack of these things is one of the things that made me turn away from the Bible and turn towards the Qur'an, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. You see we have a question here. We have a question here. If wine is prohibited in today's world, why is it available in abundance in the heavens? The same with gold and silver, etc. Isn't there something higher a human being should desire to? You see, a lot of people, now please, if you take everything I said, what could be higher than to desire to look upon the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What could be higher than the angels coming to you and saying to you, salam, salam? What could be higher than being with the martyrs, with the righteous, with the truthful? What could be higher than being with the prophets of Allah? So that this paradise is a place of physical pleasure as well as spiritual pleasure. So do not take half of what I said and leave the other half. But Allah is calling mankind to that which he delights in. As for the wine of this world, the wine of this world is not like the wine of paradise. Allah described the wine of paradise as a special wine that does not intoxicate you. It doesn't feel, leave you having a headache the next morning like the wine of this world. The wine of paradise is not a poison like the wine of this world. Because alcohol is poisonous. It is destructive to the human being. It is evil. Its intoxication causes division and destruction amongst mankind. So the wine of paradise is not like the wine of this world. And the pleasures of paradise are not like the pleasures of this world. Because the pleasures of paradise are perfect, without any side effects, without any bad implications. And these things have been given to, these things have been placed in this world as a test. This world, this life is a test. This life is the test to see who will worship Allah, who will follow the way of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who will follow the way of the prophets, and who will follow their desires, who will go for the things of the world. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, that the world is a prison for the believer. The world is a prison for the believer, but it is the paradise for the unbeliever. Because this world, the Muslim, the believer is restricted. 
They are asked to abstain from so many things. And this is the test that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given the Muslim. And if we succeed in this test, then Allah He will reward us. And if we fail in this test, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will punish us. And we seek refuge with Allah from His punishment. And we ask Allah for His reward. So my dear brother who stood up and spoke on the microphone, we apologize for interrupting him. We didn't know what you were saying. And uh, inshallah we hope that Allah will give the brothers the ability to translate these things into the Sinhalese language so that the people will be able to understand it and that they can benefit from this knowledge and be guided to the correct understanding of this matter of life after death in Islam. Assalamu alaikum, uh, Brother Azur Rahim, uh, while thanking you for a very illuminating lecture, uh, I want you to comment on the claim of various chefs and godmen who, uh, who sort of promised to help you cross the, cross the bridge. Could you please comment on that? Is there anything like that in the uh, Quran or the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Whether there is any authenticity. My brothers and sisters, I do not claim to know everything in the Quran and the Sunnah. But I have done my best to research and look into the books of those scholars who have taken a lot of care to make sure that the knowledge that they transmit can be proven with proof to be from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we must understand that this religion is based on proof. This religion is based on proof. And proof is what Allah says and what the Prophet says and the way the companions of the Prophet understood. This is the religion of Islam. So knowledge is, Allah says, and the Prophet says, and the companions understood. This is the knowledge we find the Prophet wasallam praising, and Allah praising. Knowledge is not as some people claim. Knowledge is not as some people claim, through mystic experience, or through some sort of revelation that these people claim that they receive, other than the revelation given to Allah given by Allah to his Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Do they claim for themselves to be prophets? Did they receive revelation? Did they receive knowledge that was not given to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? That was not transmitted in the authentic narrations? Shall we accept the saying of any man? No. Rather we must be able to establish with proof what Allah said and what his Prophet said. So as for these claims of the people, that they will be able to answer the questions in the grave for their followers. And that they will be able to help them across the bridge on the Day of Judgment for their followers, who are not really in reality are their followers, but their worshippers, because they have made themselves gods to be worshipped besides Allah. Then from the knowledge that I know, and the authentic knowledge that I know, there is nothing Nothing at all from Allah's book as explained by the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as acted upon and understood by the Sahaba that substantiates or lends any weight to such a claim. So if you find someone saying this, run from him. If you find someone claiming this, run from him. Run from him to Allah's book. Run from him to the message, the Sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that has been authenticated. Because I warn you now of Allah's severe punishment. And what a great loss for those people who think that when they get to their grave, their sheikh or their teacher will come to answer them the questions. What a shock they will get when all they see is the two questioning angels. The two questioning angels. Oh, where is my sheikh? Where has he come? He will not be there. He will not be there. If he is, let him prove it from Allah's book and from the sayings of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
otherwise know that really all he wants is your worship, your money, your reverence. And Allah knows best. Perhaps the question isn't related to the topic, but as a Catholic, how do I know what the truth is? How can, how can I be convinced? I don't, I, I know you would understand since you are a Catholic before. What is the truth? MashaAllah. You see, this is a very, very big and long subject. But the truth is something which can be proven to be the truth. The proof is something, the truth is something which can be proven to be the truth. So how do we know where is the truth? This is, alhamdulillah, a great question. A question that deserves a lecture dedicated to answering it. A question that deserves a lot of time to the answer of it. But I would like to say something that maybe will help this person and others to understand. In one respect, we know the truth. We don't know the truth in the sense that we know all the details of it. We don't know the truth in the sense that we don't have to study and we don't have to learn and we don't have to read. But the essence of the truth we know because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala our Lord, our Creator, when He created our father Adam, He took from the back of Adam all of Adam's descendants. And He made all of us testify and bear witness that He alone is the Rabb. He alone is the provider, the nourisher, the sustainer. And that He alone is worthy of worship. And all of us testify to this. So that anyone picking up the book of Allah, the Qur'an and I recommend this person who asked this question to pick up the Qur'an and read for yourself and see for yourself and compare this book, the Qur'an with the Bible Contain, compare what the Qur'an says about Allah about the prophets about the paradise, about the hellfire to what the Bible says and the Qur'an lays down a challenge and it says to you that if this book was from anyone else than Allah, you will find within it many contradictions. Many contradictions. You see, because the nature of something that has been written by man is that it contradicts itself. The nature of a man-made book is that it contradicts itself. It either contradicts itself internally or it has a contradiction with external realities. So the Quran, Allah asks you in the Qur'an, find a contradiction and you will not be able to do it. But open the Bible and on page 1, verse 1, you have a contradiction. According to the Bible it tells us that in the beginning God created the light and He called it day. And he created the darkness and he called it night. And the first day came. But according to the Bible, God does not create the sun until the third day. So how can we have night and day before we have the sun to produce the night and the day? This is a contradiction with what we know is established reality. Now we have to be inclined to believe that this is something a man wrote not something God revealed but look to the Qur'an you will find whenever the Qur'an is talking about the natural world the things that we find in our creation it proves to be accurate amazingly accurate so much so that some of the West's top scientists when they were shown the knowledge contained in the Qur'an concerning the natural world they said that we find it impossible it is impossible for anyone living 1400 years ago to have this knowledge and the only explanation we can find is that it must be a re revelation from God or Allah so for this matter and concerning this matter I invite the questioner to get in touch with the brothers the people in charge of this 
and they will be able to give you a cassette. On this cassette you will find a talk given by someone called Gary Miller. And this talk is called The Amazing Quran. The Amazing Quran. Listen to this and you will hear such convincing evidence, such proof that you will realize that faith is not something you just blindly believe it. But faith, alhamdulillah, the true faith is something that is built upon evidence and correct understanding. So Allah, as I mentioned, He warns you in the Qur'an. He warns the people in the Qur'an. He's mentioned in His book that when the unbelievers are taken into the hellfire and the angel, angels question them, didn't someone come to warn you? And what will they say? If only we had thought, if only we had used our reason, if only we had used our common sense, we wouldn't now be in the hellfire. So do not blindly believe something which is unbelievable without any proof. Rather, alhamdulillah, we find that with the religion of Islam, we have proof upon proof upon proof and upon proof. And we don't have the time and we don't have the space tonight to go into them. So I ask this person to research, to find out, to get cassettes and to read books and to find for yourself and keep searching. And if you are sincere, then for sure, for sure Allah, He will guide you. If you want guidance and you ask God for guidance with sincerity, He will guide you. So ask Allah, pray to God, ask Him to guide you to the truth and for sure, inshallah, He will guide you to that truth. What happens to the soul between death and the day of judgment? So we mentioned this already. The soul between death and the day of judgment is in a place called the Barzakh. Huh? This is sometimes translated as the grave. It's sometimes translated as the grave. But the reality is that this condition of the soul after death is not restricted to a grave in the sense as this is a place we dig in the ground and put our death. Because even if someone is burnt to ashes and scattered all over the four corners of the earth that will not make them escape the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that will not make them escape the questioning in the grave because Allah who created you is able to gather your soul and question your soul so the place and the condition of your body is irrelevant to the fact of the matter of the questioning of the angels in your grave. When we say in Islam the grave, this means the condition of the soul after death. So we already described this in our talk, what happens to the soul after death. Okay, there is there's a question here, that those in the grave are shown what is happening in their homes in uh, the homes of those who are living. Is there any basis for this? Then again, I refer you to the book by Mustafa Kennedy, Mystery of the Souls Revealed, where he clearly shows that all such traditions relating to this and all such reports to re relating to this are not authentic, are not authentic. So the claims that the people in the grave are shown what the living are doing in their homes as far as I know, this does not have any authentic basis that can be traced back.